Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com. Today we're going to put the final touches on our trim sheet and finish up our little mini series. So really, I think the most important thing about this is getting your perspective correct. So you can see I've set up my document with some perspective guides. For this, I like to use a piece of software called Carapace, which I've talked about in previous videos. Another way to do it is the vanishing point tool, which is native to Photoshop. But the important thing is when you really need to nail the perspective, like on the floor in this image, I'm going to first convert it to a smart object. So what that allows me to do is to try and get the perspective right the first time. But if I don't quite get it, even if I confirm it, I can always re-free transform it and it remembers the skewing. So it takes up a little extra memory, which makes your file a little bigger, but it is a really nice way to have extra tweaking power. Because in this image, I want a detail in the center of my floor. And I don't want to have to do that perspective twice. Let's say I got it you know, just perfect, exactly the way I want it. So another nice way to do this would be to just open this image. Because remember, a smart object is its own document. And then I'll just bring my trim circle here into the center of the floor, hit save, and there you can see it's in my image. Now this uh, indicates that I've got my perspective a little bit wrong, but that's not a problem. Remember, I saved it as a smart object, which means I can free transform it again, and I can get rid of that skew and get it looking exactly the way I want it to. And if I can't get it exactly the way I want to, I can just shift where the circle is in this document, cheat a little bit, and it updates in here. So I like working in this way as a quick block in method. I don't necessarily keep them as smart objects for the entire time I'm working, but it's a great way to get started. So once I'm happy with that, the next thing is to make sure that I'm integrating it into my image. And so for that, I like to make an empty mask and then painting with black, I'll just hide away where I don't need it. But that's it. I'm going to do that with a bunch of different images. And that's where the beauty of this trim sheet comes in. Now that I've got it all laid out, I can just sort of mix and match. Think what might look cool here. So for this trim piece, I am going to make it a smart object first. Get this in place here. Now for this one, you notice there's a problem. I want this to conform to the bend of the wall. So for that, I'm actually going to rasterize it. It's no longer a smart object. I'm going to cut this chunk out of the middle. So I'll make layer via cut, which is now on its own layer. And I'm going to make a bigger selection around that. Do free transform. And with the warp tool, I'm going to kind of do my best to get this into position. This is one of those things that really just takes practice. It sometimes works nicely on your first try. We'll call that good enough. And then maybe what you need to do is just edit these other layers to kind of match up a little bit better. But now the nice thing about this is I can merge those two together again. So I have one piece. And then if I want, we'll say a chair rail halfway up the wall, I can just duplicate a copy out there, get it in the correct perspective. And there we go. So you can see working in this way is a little different from making a painting. I'm essentially using photo collage skills and photo manipulation skills instead of, you know, brushwork and fine drafting. But if what we're doing is making images, this is an efficient way to do it. Again, not my final product. I'm going to be painting this to incorporate it back into my image, but as a five minute starting point, this is great. And remember, this is only one image. What happens when, as a concept artist, my next assignment may be the hallway going out of one of these doors or a big cathedral chamber next to it? Well, there's probably going to be some architectural overlap. All these little details you might see in the other room. Now, it may have a totally different layout and a totally different camera, but to have these details on my trim sheet is a great starting point. So I encourage you to get out there, make a trim sheet, and just experiment with this. It's one of those techniques that doesn't necessarily make sense until you've tried it yourself. So have fun with it. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.